Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and I have the opportunity today to work on a uh, what I call a tuition reel. I bought it as part of a, a group of reels, and it's frozen. You just cannot turn this reel. There's a lot of evidence of old salt and the like, so it's possible that it's corrosion. We're not sure. This is the Daiwa Sea Line 30H. It's a very nice reel. It's a reel that was kind of the well, the middling brother of the uh, 50H C-Line. Just a little bit shorter. A little bit of a difference in the setup, but not terribly. And uh, the newer C-Lines uh, moved the case screws inside, but other than that, they were pretty much the same. Well, it's not moving, so we want to do an investigation here. We'll see if it's uh, something that can be repaired, or if, well, I spent a couple of dollars, maybe it would have been spent better doing something else. But I always take the idea that if I if I just spend a few dollars on a reel and I learn from the reel, well, it's, it's well worth the price paid. So I'm going to start by taking off the exterior pieces. This one should have had a nut cap on it. You can see that the screw is here, but the nut cap is missing. It also should have a C-clip here to hold that uh, gear post in but uh, it's not uh, there either. But that seems to be the least of the problems as it's not turning. Well, while I take these exterior pieces off, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please hit that notification button. My channel covers all things uh, regarding fishing reel and reel repair. And I think there's something in it for you, regardless of the type of fishing reel that you, you use. And, uh, and or repair, or if uh, as a hobby, if you're just looking to learn more about uh, fishing reels, well, I try to share as much information as I can, both to show you how to do it yourself, and also to share with you the information I've gathered uh, over time about the reels. For example, this reel was probably made in the early 1980s or late 1970s, and I'm just so curious about this because these reels are, generally speaking, are very, very strong reels. We're going to uh, take this off. It's the star adjuster. Behind the star adjuster, we have a couple of uh, tension washers. And we're going to see if that turns. Sometimes, if the drags are severely worn, uh, well, you don't have enough clearance here, and, and just putting pressure on that locks it into the case, but not so here. All right, next up, then, we're going to take the three side plate screws off. Now these reels were meant for saltwater fishing, and uh, the problem with that is that these exterior screws here almost always became salt encrusted, so they were difficult to get out of this aluminum frame, and they were also clogging in on the, on the bridges here. So I think as a design change, the Daiwa did a good thing in terms of moving those bridge screws inside. I think they've also replaced these thumb screws with just general uh, tapered flathead screws for that. Let's see if we can get this out now. We can. Well, let's see if the problem is in this side or the other side. As I mentioned, there's an awful lot of salt in here, but it, fortunately it hasn't uh, corroded through either taking out the real stand or taking out the crossbars. I've seen that before. Well, we're still stuck. And that's just, to me, that's just so amazing because these reels are just so strong. Let's see if we can remove, well, we can't even turn our um, free spool here. So something is really jamming this up good. Well, I'm, this just kind of piques my curiosity. So let's keep going with this one. While we're doing that, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, Maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, like this reel. <laughs> just can't move forward. Or uh, maybe you're just uh, thinking about working on a reel and you're wondering, is there any tricks or the like that belong to the service of that reel? Well, if there is, I'll uh, try to answer those for you. I've worked on an awful lot of reels for a very long time. I've seen a lot. I don't know the answer to every question, but if I can find out what that question is and provide you an answer, well, I will be happy to try and do that for you. All right, well, we keep moving along here, though. That's the last of the bridge screws. And this is an integrated bridge back here now, so you have the, the, 
this little nut is a tie down for one of those screws that holds the anti-reverse dog on. But it's an integrated piece now, so the, the uh, bridge is going to hold your anti-reverse dog with a spring. And we can just push all of that through. And it uh, doesn't appear that there's any problem with the side case. There's a side case warm spring stuck there, so we're going to take that off. We're going to take the other spring off. Let's take the yoke out now. Well, it's not the yoke or the gears as much as these haven't been serviced. That's not the cause of why this is stuck. We, uh, we still continue to have a little bit of an issue there. It's still not turning. Let's go ahead and remove the cap. The main gear. And this, as I mentioned, should have a uh, little C-clip that holds this bridge on. So this bridge should turn separately. We know it's not doing that. So we're going to go ahead and uh, show you a little trick here. It's frozen. And we'll like, go get a plumber's torch and a little striker. Now, my, my my guess here is that this is frozen onto the shaft. So you want to do a couple of things. I'm going to be using a plumber's torch, which is going to be hot. So please, if you do attempt this, be aware that it is an open flame and things like that. I'm also going to try and grab it with a pliers where there is two flat sides. Don't want to touch the threaded se section of this. That's not going to uh, help at all. Why am I going to use heat? Well, heat expands metal, and different metals expand differently. So we have a gear shaft here, and we have an inner uh, bridge post. Chances are that they will expand differently, and if there's rust in there, that's going to take care of that. All right, I'm going to take my plumber's torch, and with any lock, light it. And then I'm just going to run it. You don't need to run it very long. I'm running up and down that gear sleeve to see if we can't pull that up a little. Okay, so I'm seeing the penetrating oil that I put in on the sleeve is bubbling there. And that generally says that, well, the heat's made its way through. I want to be careful now as I hold this. Let's see if that transferred to the bridge. No, we should be good. Now I'm going to take that pliers and see if we can move it. Well, what we wanted to do is we wanted to grab that and see if we could turn the bridge now. We can. Unfortunately, what's happening here, I can see it. I don't know if you can see it. This stud is turning too, which means that the rivet in the back here is turning, which says that we have a, a bridge that has a frozen gear sleeve on it and unfortunately when that rivet starts turning the bridge is shot. The only way that you can repair this reel is to buy a new bridge and uh, buy a new gear sleeve and do that. So how did that happen? Uh, rust. It's a steel post and uh, left unattended, left unserviced. You can see there's all kinds of greening. The internal parts, are, it's obvious, have not been serviced in quite some time. And without the, uh, the lubrication and with the salt water environment, well, that's what caused the failure here. So, did I lose anything? No, I learned something from it. I've seen this happen a number of times on pen reels and other reels, uh, where that's the exact issue that's occurred, where the rust has taken over because the reel was not uh, serviced properly. Well, and, you, uh, and you pay for that lack of service. So in this case, I got a parts reel. But uh, I also got an education that says that uh, I can help people by letting them know that uh, an ounce of prevention, right, uh, is worth it all. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you learned a little bit about that. And uh, I hope you stay watching. Uh, to our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.